Hey everybody, just want to remind you to support Project YM and your favorite YouTube channel, The Popish Plot. And save yourself 10% off your favorite Catholic Balm Co. products. By shopping at Catholic Balm Co. That is catholicbalm.co and using the code PLOT2021 at your checkout to get that 10% off. Now on with the show. Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Nate. And I'm Jessica. Today, Mike unfortunately could not be with us. He is away on a secret mission for the Pope. We know this because he was only able to give us some lame cover story as to where he was really going to be and why he could not be here this evening. I, I, I don't think he's on mission to, for the Pope. He, he gave us a very reasonable story of, of wanting to take a, some time off due to, you know, recovery from the second vaccine. I mean, I remember you went and slept like a whole weekend after that. Like half the weekend. Like I said... <laughs> Lame cover story. Obviously on a secret mission. Hopefully, when he gets back, he'll be able to tell us about it. But I mean, he if, might he might have he might be forced to secrecy and have to stick with his lame cover story. And why would it be from the Pope? I mean, if you said Bishop, maybe that would be believable. I mean, the Bishop was just in town a couple days ago. Well, if the Bishop <laughs> told him to do it, then I'm sure it's because the Pope told the Bishop. <laughs> All right, well, this is not what today is about, because today is Monday, it's May, and we are doing another um, saint or person on the path to sainthood who is of Asian or Pacific Islander heritage. Okay, okay. So, we'll get down to business. We'll we'll quit speculating about Mike's secret mission. Mm -hmm. So, who is today's saintly individual from from Asia and the Pacific Islands? Well, this one is from Japan, so as I did not study Japanese, and our daughter who did study Japanese is not going to be on screen, you get to attempt to say everything in Japanese. She also didn't do good when she studied Japanese. That's why she ended up taking German instead. I will do my best, but once again, as always, I will likely go and slaughter these names, because I'm not Japanese, nor do I know Japanese. Well... His name is not the name of any anime characters that I know of, so that kind of ruins our chances of, you know, knowing it. So as with previous ones, if by some chance you are familiar with this individual and know how to properly pronounce any of his names, please feel free to contact us either through the uh, comments or through the email. To let us know, maybe give us a phonetic phonetic spelling or or something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Anyways, I will go ahead and do and give it my, my best try. Okay. Uh, we are going to be talking about Blessed Dom Justo Takayama, who was previously Takayama Hikugoro. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he was at his coming of age celebration, they called him Shigetomo. Mm-hmm. And when he, uh, when he, um, when he converted to Christianity. Christianity, he took Justin Martyr as his patron saint, which, when they reversed Romanized it, mm-hmm. uh, became Justus Takayama Ukon. Yes, and both the Dom and the Ukon are a honorific because mm-hmm. he was a samurai and he also got into different positions of power, which we'll be discussing here. So. From what I can tell, it's part of the same honorific. It's just in the Japanese culture, they use this to denote it. And the Westerners said, you know, we'll say this. Okay. <laughs> um, he was born around 1552. We don't know exact years because... Because right, because because record During keeping that time and... when the record keeping wasn't necessarily yeah. the great. And he was born in... Haibara Sengoku... Sengoku... Japan. And then he died either on the 3rd or 5th of February in 1615, when he was about 62 to 63, in Manila, which at that time was in the Viceroy of New Spain. Sorry, the Vice Royalty of New Spain. Spain. (laughs) So, so yeah, so it would have been under the the, the leadership of a Viceroy. The Philippines were in part of Spain at the time. Yes. Um, He's a patron of persecuted Christians. Japanese immigrants, the University of Santo Thomas Graduate School, and a group of 17th century missionaries to Japan that were Jesuits all, you know, like, personally picked him as their patron. 
Wow. <laughs> you know, it really it, it really speaks to your saintliness when a whole group of missionaries say, no, no, that's the guy who's representing us. Well, given how they were missionaries to Japan and he was a Japanese person on the path it's, of sainthood. It's entirely <laughs> possible that, yeah, yeah, it's um, fair. Um, he was beatified February 7th in 2017 in Osaka, Japan by a papal legate. He was born the eldest son of the Lord of Shawa Castle. Um, and he was what was called a daimo, which is a feudal lord, which means he also was a samurai. Woo, samurais! <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know, samurai ninjas, samurai. Ninja. See, it depends because a lot of people think that ninjas weren't necessarily their own class, but whenever a samurai was acting in a way that was dishonorable for a samurai, they pretended like they were a ninja. Although other people insist that the ninjas were actually like the working people. So it's 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 iffy, yeah. But yeah, it's it's still. Mm -hmm. and, and there's the fact that you know, we we get the best parts. You know what we would think is the best parts of samurai in pictures and stuff. We tend to not care about things like. They had a martial art for flower arranging. Actually, I think that is awesome. If you can be taught how to fight your enemies <laughs> through arranging flowers. It wasn't that you were going to kill someone by flower arranging. It it's was a simply, martial art. It was it was teaching you patience and stuff. It was the equivalent of, you know, like in Karate Kid where he has him clean his house. And then he's like, now you know karate. <laughs> See, and, and, I, and I firmly believe... That there was that 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 there was that somewhere in, in feudal Japan there was a Mr. Miyagi who who taught flower, flower arranging and at some point in time you know his, 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 his one of his students is like this is stupid you're not teaching me anything why am I even here and and, and he suddenly goes place the place the lily and, and, and he goes to do the thing where he play at, at, at which point he ends up blocking an attack and uh -huh. yeah anyway um. His family was Buddhist when he was born, but they converted in around 1564 after meeting Portuguese missionaries. Yeah. Um, so he was pretty young at that time. He was probably around like 12-ish. Um, so he spent a, a good amount of his early years of being a Christian, being more concerned about being a samurai than being a Christian, because as we have discussed... No, well, in fairness, I mean, don't you... <laughs> No dismissing all of our friends who, all of those friends of ours who are, who are in, uh, um, what's the word? consecrated religious life, but. When, being a samurai sounds a lot cooler. Being a samurai <laughs> sounds cooler, I'll be honest. All right, but then at around age 20, he was in a battle that ended up going to a duel to the death, and he won, as you would expect because he lived to be 64-ish. Sure. But he was greatly wounded. And so in his recovery time, he had kind of a situation like... A la Saint Nacho. Exactly. He had to sit there. He, he Got, had no, to be time. Like, Got no time to do anything but sit there and read about great saints and, and the adventures that they went on. Well, that and the fact that, you know, he, he, he had a situation where he almost died. Mm-hmm. And he had to reevaluate his it, life. It <laughs> really does help you focus all of your all of your priorities when you know mm -hmm. living becomes a, a, a severe priority. So after that, he was much more firm in his faith. Um, he married and had three sons and one daughter. He was a governor for a couple of different areas, starting at around age twenty-one. So it probably didn't take him too long to recover. And him being a governor allowed him to help the Jesuit missionaries, which were pretty much the only missionaries in the area. Yeah. Um, there were some other orders, but by and large, that's who he ran into. So it wasn't like he particularly loved the Jesuits. It's just he wanted missionaries. Well, and, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, you got to kind of be a, uh, you kind of kind of be brave to want to go into, in, into the mission territories where, they might actually want to kill you for, for what you believe. So Yes. But him Soldiers for Christ. Yeah. Him being, you know, a, a leader, um, they had a title that essentially was Christian leader to, to describe how him and his father before him and some other um samurais and, and daimos that were Christian ordered their areas. Okay. Um that let many um conversions take place because, well, 
the, the samurai, you know, in charge of you says, hey, listen to this guy. You're going to, you know, listen with as much open mind as you can. Hmm. <laughs> you know, um, until there was a chancellor who decided he was going to start persecuting Christians to the point where he was told he could either give up his fiefdom or his religion. And that was in 1587. Yeah. So he renounced his all his political power. And went and lived with friends and allies, you know. He he lost all the money that related to his power, so he was kind of at the mercy of people. Well, and, and that choice is actually very in line with his with his uh, with his samurai ideals: mm-hmm. death before dishonor, or as we call, as we uh, Christians would call it, martyrdom before. Um, oh, what's the word? It starts with an A. Apostasy. Yes, yes. If you know, like, a handful of things about samurais, you know that their the honor was very important, as was following one's lord. In this case, not an earthly lord. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, and so he lived in Japan, going around to people that were friendly to his um, cause and beliefs, until 1614, when a new person was in charge, and they outlawed Christianity completely. So um, he left from Nagasaki with 300 other Catholics to go to the Philippines. Um, The Spanish Philippines at that time offered to invade Japan, overthrow the anti-Christian government, and put him in political power. But he declined the the offer. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And he died actually only about 40 days after reaching Manila. Um, It was said that he died while he was praying his rosary, so... That, that's not a bad way to go. Yep. And he is the only daimo that is buried in the Philippines and was given a Christian burial, of course, with the full military honors of his position. Mm. Um, his cause was open shortly after his death, but because Japan was isolationist and anti-Christian at the time, they couldn't get all the paperwork and stuff that they mm. needed for that. So that kind of stopped. Um, they tried again... I think within the last century, and there was also issues that were like technical errors, not like we found anything wrong with his life ones. Yeah. So his current cause was opened in 2012 when they wrote a letter to the then Pope um, Benedict XVI, and they had hoped that he would be declared a blessed by the 400th anniversary. And they were very, very close, but part of the issue is. He is officially considered a martyr because he died because of his ill health from the treatment of the anti-Christian government that he was living under. All right. Well, but that should be like a, a shoe in right? I mean... Yes, but because he wasn't outright killed by them, but died from poor oh. health, it was something so that they had to go and discuss. So he's kind of a martyr. He, he, he's, not, he's not as martyry. He's not as much of a martyr as some of those other martyrs. Yes, yes. Both the group that... Pope Francis then okayed, agreed that he was a martyr. And even um, St. Alfonso Liguori went and read a bio of him, you know, centuries ago and said, this guy is a martyr. So he's got both popes and saints that agree that he essentially ended up dying because of his treatment for being a Christian. But <laughs> so, so then they had a commemorative mass in Kobe, mm-hmm. uh, Japan, for the 400th anniversary of his death. The Archbishop of Manila attended talked about how a bridge of faith and martyrdom connected the two churches yes. in Japan and the Philippines. And then we will talk about that next week because... We have another saint right. who's involved in that mm-hmm. bridge. Yep. So, uh, go down below, and once again, if you know how to pronounce all of the words that we slaughtered, <laughs> please... I'm pretty sure I got Nagasaki correct. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm fairly certain, though, that you got this one wrong because that's not Daimo... That's Daimyo. yo. Ah. There's a Y in there. But I copy the spelling, but yeah, there was an accent, so So but if you if you know how to pronounce the if you know the legitimate pronunciation for those words, please go put it down below in the in the in the uh, comments so that we can then go and correct ourselves later on. Um, also, while you're down there, maybe share with us your favorite uh, Pacific Island slash Asian saint or you know, fun things you know about Japan. While you're down there, make sure you hit the comment button or the, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to, to get notifications of when our next episode comes out along with the like button because it's a thumbs up. Everybody likes a thumbs up. 
It'll make you feel good. It'll make, it'll make us feel good. <laughs> Just do it. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. And share, share that, that love. love.